Next thing we want to talk about is conductivity. So conductivity. We've had, we've seen that little i convention or electron current is equal to n a v, where v is the drift speed, v is equal to mobility times electric field. So little i is n a u e. Capital I is then the charge of an electron or the charge of what's whatever the mobile charge is in the in the conductor times N A U E. So when we're thinking about how easy is it for a current to flow given a particular electric field inside a conductor, it depends on a number of things. It depends on the mobility, depends on the cross-sectional area of the wire, depends on the electron density. Okay, so let's just write these things again. Just, just a reminder, this is mobility. N is the electron density. It depends on the charge, too. I mean, the charge of an electron isn't going to change, of course. But you, may, you can think of other types of conductors, like maybe um, aqueous solutions, where the mobile charges might not be electrons. They might be doubly charged ions or something like that, right? So the charge would make a difference as well. Well, all of those quantities, Q, N, and U, are properties of the material, okay? The area, the area is a property of the geometry, right? That depends on how big you make the wire. But Q, N, and U are all properties of the material, and they all affect how easy it is to get a current to flow given a certain electric field. Individually, they're tricky to measure. We can't actually do it, and we'll see later when we get to magnetic forces a way to measure some of these quantities. Individually, they're tricky to measure, but grouped as a whole, we can measure it more easily. And so we're going to define something. This is a Greek letter lowercase sigma. It's like a O with a little curl on it. That quantity, Q times N times U, is called the conductivity. And it's just a measure of, again, how, how conductive a conductor is, meaning how easily can the charges flow given a particular electric field uh, applied to it. Okay? So, Sometimes this is rewritten, I over A. This is current per unit cross-sectional area. Sometimes this is called the current density. We're not going to talk too much about this, but you might see it in future courses. So just giving you a little heads up. This is sometimes given the symbol, uh, symbol capital J. Okay, It's just the number of amps per meter squared. Okay, so capital J is equal to, equal to sigma times E is another way of stating this relationship. And this is something you may see in, in uh, if you take an electrical engineering or intermediate electromagnetism class. But it's nothing more than just restating I equals NAUE, okay? So let's just try a quick calculation. Again, nothing too fancy here. If you know that copper has an electron density of 8 times 10 to the 28 electrons per meter cubed and a mobility of 4.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters per second divided by newtons per coulomb, what's the conductivity? And the units are kind of funny looking, but we'll simplify the units in just a second. per meter squared divided by volts per meter. So it's going to be ampere meter squared volts. And then, so, it's, so it's going to be that. It's actually going to be ampere divided by 
volt meter. Okay. And in just a second, we'll we'll introduce the ohm. And so, in fact, conduct, uh, conductivity is really is really uh, measured in per ohm meter. Okay, so so it's a little it's a little funny looking for right now, but we'll get we'll simplify it in just a second. Okay, answer number three: five point seven six times ten to the seven. What's the charge we're multiplying by? Yeah, the charge of an electron, right? Because we know that the mobile charges in copper are electrons, so it's one point six times ten to the minus nineteen times uh, what do we say? The n is eight times ten to the twenty eighth. And the mobility is 4.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Or, yeah, 10 to the minus 3. And so that should give you uh, 5.76 times 10 to the 7. What, uh, so the units. We have coulombs. We have uh, electrons per meter cubed. And we have meters per second divided by volts per meter. So it looks kind of ugly. We have meters squared here. And meters squared is going to cancel out with that and leave a meter here. And a coulomb per second is an amp. And so we have amps divided by volt meters, So which is the same thing as that, only I'm simplified. Um, OK, so that's conductivity of copper. 10 to the seventh in these units is uh, Typical conductivity for a high conductivity for a metal, copper, gold, silver, that sort of thing. Uh, carbon, on the other hand, conductivity of carbon, which is an, not a good conductor, often considered just an insulator, is about uh, something like 10 to the fourth, okay, three times 10 to the fourth. So, just to give an example of how big these quantities can be. Uh, one other thing you might run into is a quantity called resistivity, which is just 1 over the conductivity. And it's given the symbol Greek letter rho. It's equal to 1 over sigma. Okay, So sometimes it's, it's easier to measure how much the material resists the flow of electricity than how much it conducts electricity. So that may be something, again, 